Welcome to episode 79 of Norse Myths, Legends, and Folktales. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we learn about the kidnapping of Pungild, the sister of Deep Light, and his encounter with King Lorne in part one of the wonderful Rose Garden. First, be it told of the Lady Coonhild's brother, Dietleip the Dane. He had fame in his own land for strength and prowess, and great and glorious were the deeds of his sire, the brave Jarl Bitterolf. It chanced that when the three journeyed towards Bern, they were set upon by Haima and his robber band in the midst of a forest. Boldly fought the Danes, and the robbers were all killed, save Haima alone, whom deep life with his sword, Velsung, wounded on the forehead and put to flight. Thereafter, the young Dane became a servant unto Dietrich, making pretense that his name was Ilmunric. It chanced that the prince paid visit to the court of Ermunric, and there his Danish servant, taunted by Walter of Vasgenstein, Dietlip was wroth, and he challenged the arrogant knight, wagering life against life, to prevail against him in performing feats of strength. All the court assembled to behold the sport, and the knight was boastful and proud. But great was the might of Dietlip the Dane. He could put the stone and throw the hammer so that men marveled to behold, nor could Walter of Vaskenstein prevail against him. Then did King Ermenric pay life ransom in money for the boastful knight, and the Dane gave a great feast to which his master did invite many valorous war men. Proud was Dietrich of his servant, and he made him a knight. Haima, who had returned, was present at the feast, and Dietleit sat beside him, and ere long he spake, saying, On thy forehead is an evil scar, Haima. How came thou by it? Haima made answer, I shall tell thee in secret, Ilmenric. Wounded was I in combat, and Dietleib the Dane, I shall not rest until my shame be wiped out with his life blood. Know then, the new knight whispered, that I am he whom thou dost attack with thy robber band. Look in my face. I am no other than Dietleib. Fast was thy horse, else thou hast not escaped me. But I seek not now to denounce thee before Dietrich. Let the secret be kept between us. It chanced upon a day thereafter that fair Kunhild, Dietlieb's sister, danced with her maids upon a green meadow. She went towards a linden tree, then suddenly she vanished from sight. The king of the dwarves, whose name was Lauren, had long loved her for her beauty and desired to have her for his bride. So he came secretly towards the maiden, and below the linden tree he cast over her his cloak of obscurity. Then did he carry fair Kunhild away towards his castle among the Tyrolese mountains. The heart of Dietlip was filled with sorrow because that he loved his sister very dearly. He hastened unto Hildebrand, who dwelt in his castle at Garda, and besought his aid, saying, Castle of Lorne is in the midst of the Tyrol mountain, and in front of it hath a wondrous rose garden. Many a life may be lost ere Kunhild is rescued. Hildebrand said, But let us unto Dietrich and his knights, so that we may take counsel with them. When the knights came to know that Kunhild was taken away by the dwarf king, Wolfhart spake boldly, as he was wont, and said, Alone shall I ride forth and rescue the fair maiden. Dietrich heard the boast, nor made answer. He spake to wise old Hildegard, saying, Knowest thou aught of Lauren's rose garden? Tis told, Hildebrand said, that it hath four gates of gold, but no wall shields it. Round the rose garden is drawn a silken thread, and he who breaks it shall have his right hand and his left foot cut off. Lauren, king of dwarves, ever keeps watch over his wondrous garden, which is of exceeding great beauty. Vitiga spake, 
Lauren can push not any offender who entereth his garden until he doth prevail against him in single combat. Then shall we fare forth, Dietrich said. We seek but Coonhild and need not to spoil the rose garden. So the prince rode towards the Tyrol mountain in which Lauren, king of the dwarves, had his dwelling. With him went Hildebrand, Herebrand's son, Vitiga, Vilen's son, Dietlieb the Dane, and Wolfhart, Hildebrand's kinsman. Dietrich and Vitiga rode in front because that Hildebrand had taunted the prince, as was his wont, for he had been his master. Were I not with thee, he said, thou couldst not overcome the dwarf. So it fell that Dietrich and Vilen's son were first to reach the wondrous rose garden. Vitiga broke to pieces a golden gate, and they entered together. Fair were the roses, and of sweet and refreshing fragrance. Their beauty gladdened Dietrich's eyes, and he was loath to despoil them. But Vitiga sought to defy the dwarf, and he rode through the blossoming shrubs, trampling them ruthlessly underfoot. Soon was the fair garden made desolate as a wilderness. Wroth was Lauren, king of the dwarves. He rode forth on his still clad in full armor. His spear was in his hand. But three spans high was he, yet had he wondrous strength and skill in conflict. What evil have I done thee that thou shouldst thou destroy my roses? he cried bitterly. Thy right hand and thy left foot I now demand and must needs obtain. Vitiga defied the dwarf with laughter and scorn, and he deemed not that he was endowed with magical power. Diamonds sparkled upon Lauren's armor. These made it sword-proof and spear-proof. He also wore a girdle which gave him the strength of twelve men. On his head was a shining crown, and therein was his weakness. Golden birds sang forth from it as if they were alive. Vitiga lowered his spear. Lauren charged fiercely and at the first thrust swept him from the saddle. In great peril was Vilen's son, for the dwarf bound him. But Dietrich made offer of gold to atone the evil he had done. Thy roses, he told Lauren, will bloom again in May. The dwarf made answer that he possessed already gold in abundance, but that his roses could not be restored unto him. Vitiga taunted Dietrich. Fearest thou to tilt with him, he said? Must I die because thou dost shrink from Lauren? The prince was wroth, and he challenged the dwarf king forthwith to single combat, taking upon himself the blame for the evil which his knight had accomplished. "'Twas well for Dietrich that old Hildebrand then rode up with Wolfhart, his kinsman, and Dietlieb the Dane. The old warrior counseled the prince to tilt not with the dwarf. "'Rather thou shouldst fight him on foot with a sword against sword,' he said. "'His armor thou canst not pierce, for by reason of the diamonds it is charmed against all weapons. Smite thou upon his head.' Hildebrand counseled so to Dietrich too. He leaped from the saddle and challenged Lauren to combat with swords. Fierce was the conflict. The prince smote upon the dwarf's head, blow after blow, so that he was made faint. But Lauren drew round him his cloak of obscurity and fought him unbeholden to the prince of Bern. And here's where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.